Welcome back everybody. My name is Mark and this is Supersonics X. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the role that the tongue and vocal tract in general plays in tone production and pitch selection on the saxophone, which builds on what we talked about last time regarding the embouchure. In the course of this video, we're going to take a look at a concept called voicing, which is often considered the secret to producing the upper register on saxophone. And we'll hear a few basic exercises we can do to develop awareness of this process. In addition, we'll look at what the latest science has to say about this phenomenon, which many players report, and also examine a rather unconventional perspective on voicing from Lenny Pickett, one of the modern masters of the saxophone's high register. I'll also show you the way that this topic is covered in my method book, and I guarantee that by practicing these exercises, you'll be on track to comfortably extending your range on any saxophone setup. The idea of voicing refers to the position of your tongue and overall sensation of your vocal tract, which many players feel is what makes it possible to play with ease in the upper register. Part of the challenge in teaching this to other saxophonists is that it is practically impossible to describe exactly what you have to do with your tongue position, air speed, embouchure pressure, and so on, because the instrument is ultimately played by feel, and every player has to discover for themselves how to get everything working together. Sigurd Rascher commented on this problem in Top Tones for the Saxophone, and pointed out that describing the production of an overtone, scientifically or mechanically, does not really help the student to successfully play one. The production of an overtone is the result of a delicately adjusted embouchure coupled with a completely controlled flow of air. Variations of these two factors are so nimble that the author hesitates to define them. The attempt to do so would be comparable to the admonition of a voice teacher. Give 4 and 1 16th ounces of tension on the vocal cords, produce an outgoing airflow of 3,278 cubic centimeters per minute, and check with your ear that the desired number of vibrations of the vocal cords and hence of the tone per second is 660, that is, E. Instead, he tries to give the student an accurate concept of the aim for tone, pitch as well as other properties, which in turn influences, below the level of consciousness, the action of the lungs, vocal cords, etc., resulting eventually in the production of the tone. There's no doubt that playing in the altissimo register feels very different than playing in the low register, especially in regards to what's happening with the tongue and throat. So the purpose of studying voicing is to become familiar with and ultimately memorize the sensation associated with playing each note so that any pitch throughout the range can be produced at will. But what is going on with our anatomy that makes this possible? There was actually a study in the scientific literature from a research group in Australia that discovered in order to play in the high register, Professional saxophonists learn to tune their vocal tracks to a frequency slightly above that of the note to be played. So what exactly does that mean? The experimental setup is pretty complex, but as we say in science, is outside the scope of this YouTube video. But I'll try to give a basic overview of their results here. When playing the saxophone, the vibrating reed is the point at which the sound wave is generated. But that wave then travels not only into the bore of the instrument, but also into the oral cavity of the player. So when you're playing a note on the saxophone, and you measure those frequencies in an acoustic impedance spectrum, there was a contribution from the bore of the instrument after the reed, but also the vocal tract before the reed. Think of it like this. The saxophone is not a complete instrument by itself. Only when you add the player to the horn does the full instrument come together. So the experimental setup of this research group allowed them to measure mathematically to what degree, if any, the vocal tract was contributing to the pitch being produced. They observed in the low register that there was no correlation between what was happening in the vocal tract and the note being played. The pitch being produced was determined by the bore of the instrument, which means in the low register, or so-called normal range of the instrument, the note you get depends on which keys you're pressing down. Now for the interesting part. The professional players essentially tuned their vocal track to the note they wanted to produce. On the other hand, inexperienced players could not do this, and as a result, could not produce the altissimo register. This explains why fingerings are much less important when playing high notes. Certain fingerings can make it easier, as can certain combinations of mouthpieces and reeds, but it is ultimately the acoustics of the player's vocal tract which determines success in this area. So there you have it. All you have to do is tune your vocal track to altissimo G, and the note will pop right out. It doesn't work. This is too hard. 
There is no hard, only unfamiliar, and the trick to being able to play anything easily on the saxophone, especially the high register, which everybody is capable of doing, is to become familiar with the feel of doing so. Another interesting observation from that study was that none of the professional saxophonists who were able to perform this vocal track tuning were consciously aware of what they were doing at the level of their anatomy. As many saxophonists report when playing up high, something is happening with the tongue and throat, but it can be difficult to describe exactly what. So again, it comes back to figuring out for ourselves how to play by feel. Okay, but what do we do to learn to play high? Before getting into the exercises, let's consider a rather unconventional take on voicing from Lenny Pickett, whose saxophone pyrotechnics routinely reach into the sixth octave or even higher. He stated in an interview, breath control is the most important component to being able to produce the high notes. The talk of voicing, while well-intended, is somewhat misleading. Teachers use it to try to get students to find the related sensation that comes with learning altissimo. It's a fake out. I think it's better to say the hard truth. Ultimately, if you want to play the high notes, you have to learn to increase and control the speed of the airstream. That is what I mean by breath control. That means many, many hours of practicing long tones. Sorry. Now that's something to think about because the guy who plays higher than everybody else thinks that voicing is not the best way to approach learning the upper register and that it's more about air. If I stop and think about it, I'm inclined to agree with him because when I was learning the saxophone, in my experience, the airstream was kind of taken for granted. And even though I was voicing each note, or at least trying to, I couldn't even reach the palm keys. But when I shifted my focus to develop my technique around wind power or breath control, that's when everything clicked and my range practically doubled. So how do we get started? If you've never paid much attention to what was going on with your tongue and vocal tract before, these can be very unfamiliar sensations. So the purpose of the following exercises is to gain an awareness of the subtle movements of the oral cavity that affect pitch and tone. Exercise number one, finger a low F, but then blow a strong enough airstream so that the note sounds one octave higher without using the octave key and hold that pitch until it naturally falls down to the fundamental. Then continue this exercise chromatically down until you reach low B flat. <laughs> exercise number two, play an open C sharp and then using your tongue and vocal tract, bend the note down to a C and then back up to a C sharp. <laughs> like before, continue down as far as you can until you can reach a low B flat. At that point, it can be very difficult to bend the low B flat down to an A, a full half step, but we just do our best to get as close as possible. <laughs> Exercise number three, finger a high C sharp, but then blow a low C sharp one octave lower, still pressing down the octave key. Also try slurring down an octave and then back up, still without lifting the octave key. Continue moving down chromatically until you can do the same with middle D and low D. It's pretty much agreed upon that the best way to go about learning the upper register is the study of the overtone series. This is usually done by studying the overtones of what are often called the long fingerings, or low B flat to low C sharp or D. experience, I found it very difficult to even get beyond the second overtone on low B flat, which is supposed to be one of the easier fingerings. So the way this topic is approached in my method book is slightly different. The general idea is to study the overtones of every fingering and not just the lowest notes. A great goal to keep in mind as a means of achieving this is to play the first two and a half octaves using only the fundamental fingerings and the first overtones. <laughs> Then do the same thing with the fundamentals and first and second overtones. 
Something you'll notice when you get to the short tube notes, so about G and above, is that the higher partials tend to go sharp. But just do your best to keep the overtone as close as possible to what the ideal pitch should be. The reason we do these exercises is to get to know what it feels like to play the higher partials of each fingering. Because what that does is essentially model what it feels like to play in the upper register beyond top F. <laughs> And finally, the fundamentals with the first, second, and third overtones. At this point, if you go back and study the overtone series of the lowest notes, you should find it much easier to move around the higher partials. In addition, you can now start attempting notes above top F, and you'll likely have an easier time of finding the appropriate adjustment you need to make in order to get each note to speak freely. Something extremely important to keep in mind when practicing all of this is that it won't happen overnight. Discovering the feel of playing the overtone series or in the upper register takes time for the brain to assimilate all of the subtle adjustments that are necessary to get everything working together, much of which is happening at a subconscious level. Just try to go a little bit further every day and I promise you that sooner or later you'll be met with a surprise of success. If you're interested in going much more in depth and getting a structured, straightforward path to follow to unlock the saxophone's high register, check out my method book in the link below. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest content, and be sure to check out the other videos on this channel. And if you'd like to learn more, check out the links below for a free ebook about three principles that lay the foundation for effortless saxophone playing. Also, if you want to learn more about the anatomy of the vocal tract while playing high notes, another channel, Get Your Sax Together, has a fantastic video describing exactly that, complete with animations that you should definitely check out. Now keep doing those breathing exercises and I'll see you next time.